Hey, what's up? This is Scott and welcome to Weekly Svelte, the series where I talk about Svelte every single Friday. So in this Weekly Svelte, we're going to be talking all about Svelte Check. Now, this is going to be an extremely short video because Svelte Check is really not that complex. Now, if you've ever used Svelte Kit before, you may have noticed that in your scripts section, there have been some additions to your scripts like check or or creation in your scripts, which like check, um, where we have it running svelte check and then check watch. Now by default, there's no threshold here. You'll see that I've added the threshold, but it also points to a TS config, which is our TS config. If you're using TypeScript, if you're not using TypeScript, it won't point to this. Now you may be wondering what the heck is svelte check and why does it exist here? And the easiest answer is that like the NPM uh, site says here that uh, Svelte Check is a CLI to diagnose checks for unused CSS, Svelte Ally hints, TypeScript, and JavaScript compiler errors. And it even gives you all sorts of information, whether that's warning or interesting things like that. It, it will tell you if it's a something you have to be watching out for, something that's an actual error in your code, or something that you should maybe just be aware of. And as you can see here, we have this threshold where you can say, hey, only show me errors or only show me at a warning threshold. A warning threshold will, will share warning and errors. Errors will only show errors. But no matter what, if you run this, it will actually tell you the total amount of each thing. So let's run this. Uh, I use PNPM, so I'm going to be saying PNPM. If you were using NPM, it would be NPM run. And I'm going to say PNPM check. And you can say this is going to check my package. It's going to check it for a host of things. And this is going to tell us that we have 262 hints, five warnings, and zero errors. So the zero errors is the one I'm most concerned about. And the reason why it's not showing me any messages here is because I do have threshold error shown. Now threshold error is going to make it so it only shows the errors if we have errors. And since we have none, hey, we get a yellow color and it says we have zero errors. But if what if you want to see those warnings? Well, you can say, um, let me do the threshold as warning. And actually, let me double check it's warning and not yeah, warning. Okay. And let's rerun this. We can run PNPM check. And this is going to run this and it's going to output these five warnings that we have um, in the, the 262 hints. That's not great. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that, but you can see there's some interesting things like avoid marquee elements. Uh, we use this marquee element as um, something on the admin side and it's just for fun. It's just goofy. So um, because of that, there's no real reason to worry about this. This isn't going to be an accessibility issue for the users on our site. But we also see things like unused CSS selector, and it tells you what file and where this issue is. OK, this is in the admin submenu. Uh, it's saying that, hey, uh, there's a unused CSS selector content layout. And why do you have that in your CSS if you're not using it? or even things like unused exports, they'll show up here in warnings. So this is an extremely handy tool to have to analyze and understand your code and really see what's going wrong. Now there's also a watch mode that you can have with a just hyphen hyphen watch if you pass that in as an option here. And that's actually really awesome to have, to have this watch mode and to have this running. And you can see here that I usually leave this on as threshold error and watch when I want to do my watch. Now you can also utilize these in things like GitHub Actions. You can see I have a GitHub Action here and let me bump up the size. All it's doing in the GitHub Action is it's going to build the app. It's going to run Svelte check. If the build fails, it's going to cancel our PR. If PNPM check fails, it's going to cancel our PR. As in, if there's no errors, it's going to allow this to pass. Warnings are okay here. So this is just simply running PNPM check, which is running the script from inside of here. Now, some people might be wondering why um, their, their Svelte kit project doesn't type check or those types of things on run. Now to do that, what you'll want to do is have this be a separate process. Let me actually come into you here. And the way we're doing this is there's a there's a whole host of running a whole host of ways of running scripts concurrently in 
um, in your node package scripts. But the way that we're doing it is just with an ampersand. And since we're using um, ZSH, this works. So you can see here that when I choose to run the dev command, like when I stop and restart my dev process, I'm actually deleting the entire SvelteKit folder. Why? I just, I like to delete caches and stuff like that if I'm rebuilding. I, it's you don't have to do that. It's just something I like to do. Um, Vite, it's setting my environment variable to development. And then it's saying, hey, run SvelteKit dev, ampersand, run SvelteKit, uh, or Svelte check, where is it? Ampersand, run Svelte check, hyphen, hyphen, threshold, error, whatever, passing all of the same information. And it's also passing the watch, which means that if you run ampersand Svelte check, with your Svelte dev process, it's going to run them at the same time and keep them as the same script, meaning that I can say PNPM, whatever, UI dev, whatever it runs my dev command. And you can see not only does it start up the Svelte kit site, it generating some code gen stuff up here, that's what that is, but this is starting up my Svelte kit site. Not only that, but it's actually running our Svelte check as well. Now, the only issue I've found with this is that it also type checks the .svelte.kit folder, which seems to always give me this error object is possibly undefined. So um, that's one little caveat to this thing. You'll always at least have one error. If this doesn't bother you, um, it doesn't bother me because I know it's one error that I'm going to have. Um, if this doesn't bother you, then I think this is a great way to have this running all the time. In fact, if you were to make like a change to any of your files, let's say I just hit save here, I made a little change to this file, this is going to rerun your diagnostics. Now, if your computer can't handle this or this is causing you really high CPU usage, obviously don't do this. I'm on an M1 Mac that's like really super powerful and it like doesn't sweat this at all. So. Uh, if you want to run your type checking in addition to your development process, this is certainly a way to do it. Otherwise, you can uh, look up concurrently running node scripts. There's some options there. I think there's a package called concurrently or something like that. Um, maybe if you have a means of doing that, leave a description in the or leave a comment on the video. So if you have a, a specific way you like to run your scripts concurrently, leave that in a comment and let me know. Uh, since I am using ZSH, the ampersand is just working super nicely here. And this just, uh, this does it all. This does everything I needed to do. Every time I run Svelte Dev, I'm also starting up a watch process for Svelte Check. So this is what Svelte Check is. If you want to learn more about its configuration options, which of course, there are some fail on warnings, fail on hints. So if you, if you want it to fail on warnings, you can. If you want it to fail on a hint, you can. Um, you pass it your TS config if you're using uh, TypeScript, you can give it some different output uh, properties, human, human, verbose, machine. That's pretty neat. Uh, I never have changed that myself. Compiler warnings, uh, diagnostic sources. This is not anything I've used with this either. Use new transformation. I haven't tried this either. It says felt files need to be transformed. Uh, it says this can be enabled. This is the new transformation. It can be enabled and it's going to be the default soon if you're the type of person likes to try new stuff, you can try this. I have not tried it. I've just been, been using the, the default because it works fine for me and I, I like it. There's some more information here, a little bit of FAQ, but this is Svelte Check. This is why it's useful and this is what it does inside of your Svelte Kit projects. And most importantly, this is how you also run it with your Svelte dev process. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week in Weekly Svelte as we dive into part two of our loading animation and build something really cool there. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.